Praise the Lord. It's another Sunday in the land of the living. Glory be to God. We are alive again this Sunday. Either lockdown or no lockdown, we are sure that this season for you and for me, we work together for our good in Jesus' name. We are looking at the word of God from Luke chapter 24, verse 28 to 35. And they drew near unto the village, whither they went, and he made a thought he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat and met with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their presence. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? 33. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, 34, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and had appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. The Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you and bless your mighty name for the privilege of another Sunday. Thank you, Father Lord, that even though we are not able to meet together bodily, we are still able to interact through this means. Thank you, mighty God, for your love and kindness, for your protection, for covering us, for helping us, for being our God. We thank you, Father, because you are faithful and gracious. Thank you, everlasting Redeemer, that as we go into your word this Sunday, the Lord, your presence will be mightily released to visit your children wherever they may be listening or watching this word from. Father, we are praying that you will be glorified in the life of everyone who will have the opportunity to tune in. We pray, mighty God, that you will be glorified. We give you all honor and all adoration as we are believing you that this lockdown will soon be over and we'll be meeting again together. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This uh, Sunday, I want to bring you a word that I have entitled, Abide with us. Abide with us. And uh, from where our pastor read for our lesson, that is uh, Luke chapter 24. Uh, The story actually begins from verse 13, and um, it is a story of what happened uh, a few days after Easter, and uh, we have just uh, uh, been out of Easter this last uh, week, and uh, so this is like a follow-up of the story of Easter, and um, it is a story of two people, two men, who from verse 13, who took off from um, a village called Emmaus to go to Jerusalem. It's according to the Bible, uh, three score furlongs, which is uh, 60 furlongs. And uh, in our present day counting, it is uh, something like seven miles or 12 kilometers. So they were walking that distance. And um, as they were going suddenly, a third man joined them. And um, they did not recognize this man. But the Bible makes it clear that it is our Lord Jesus Christ who had risen from the dead who joined them. And uh, the Bible records that their eyes were closed, which you will uh, see if you start reading from verse uh, 13. In uh, verse 16, the Bible says that their eyes were holding that they should not know him. They did not recognize him as the Lord who had risen. 
So he asked them, what is it that you people are uh, discussing? What is it going on? And they were surprised. They asked him a question. Are you a stranger in these parts that you don't know what is going on? It's a very polite way of saying, are you a fool that you don't understand the goings on around us? But the Bible tells us that after listening to them, that he started to teach them. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went to tarry with them. This happened after their journey. By the time they were given him this invitation, they thought that they were doing him a favor by asking that he should come in. But they don't know that they were doing themselves a favor. Because up to this time, they still had not understood who it was that had joined them along the way. What are some of the few lessons, some of the few blessings that we see from this invitation that these men uh, extended to the Lord Jesus Christ? When they said, abide with us, and he agreed to abide with them. The Bible tells us that he began to teach them, uh, taking them from the writings of Moses up to the present time to open their understanding about what was said about the Lord Jesus Christ, about the death and his resurrection, which they did not understand because by the time the Lord died and resurrected, they were not sure what was going on. So their life was like what we have today, some form of uncertainty and fear. We don't understand what is going on in our world today. We hear of this virus and they right over there, over here, where everywhere you go to, you hear people are dying, people are contracting it, which is the reason why many of us are now locked up in our homes and unable to go out and do the usual things that we do. The people in the days of Jesus, especially the disciples in those days, we are living in uncertainty and fear because they did not know what was going on around them until Jesus met these two men and opened their understanding. Very often, we don't recognize the Lord's presence, just as this man did not recognize his presence. When the Lord comes to us, when the Lord visits us, some of the time we don't recognize it. We are, many of us are looking at the things we are losing because we are not able to go out, we are not able to run our businesses, we are not able to go to school, we are not able to meet some of the responsibilities. We don't recognize some of the blessings that may be accruing to us as we are now all alone, sometimes all alone the whole day with the Lord, praying, reading our Bibles. We don't recognize the blessings that are coming to us. The Bible tells us that the Lord took time from the, the writings of Moses up to that present time to teach them, to open their understanding, to see what was said about him. That was the first blessing. They came to get a greater understanding of the scriptures. When we abide with the Lord, when the Lord abides with us, there is a greater understanding of the scriptures. We understand what the word of God says. We are, our eyes and understandings are opened. And when you look at these men when they start, uh, started, they were like fools. And that was what the Lord called them in verse 27. Oh fools. It wasn't like an insult. It was like saying you ought to know this, but you don't know it. How often you know, we as believers, there are things that we ought to know. There are levels that we ought to have attained as believers, which it, it, it appears we have not attained. Because when some shakings come, when we get some problems, our reaction shows that we have not yet reached the level that we ought to be. Another thing that we see is when they arrived in verse 29, when they arrived at the place where they were going, and the Lord accepted the invitation to come into the house and stay with them. They brought out food, and the first thing that he did was to bless. Our Lord is a God of blessings. The Bible tells us after the Lord has finished all his creation, he blessed us. He blessed mankind. He said, be fruitful and multiply. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, as he was leaving and going back to heaven, the last thing that he did was blessing his uh, disciples. He was in that process of blessing and he was lifted up. So God is always in the process of blessing. He blessed the food and the bread. And it was at that point that their eyes were opened and they recognized the Lord. So when you abide with the Lord, when the Lord abides with you, there is lots and lots of blessings that are a part of this relationship. There is also a great deal of spiritual understanding. There is a great deal of knowledge. Paul prayed in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 and said that I may know him. And one way that we can know the Lord is by spending time with him. A lot of zeal and fervency was released because they proclaimed and said why he was talking to us when we are born in, inside us. So when the Lord, when you are with the Lord, you can't remain cold. You can't remain in what the Lord has timed to be either cold nor hot. You will certainly be hot and burning for the Lord. As soon as they saw that the person who had spoken to them was the Lord, that they were bold enough, they were strong enough to go back again. They didn't mind the night. They returned again to Jerusalem, uh, to Amos that same night, to tell the other disciples that indeed the Lord had risen. And then they became carriers of good news. They became encouragers. They were able to encourage the other disciples who were hiding. They were in hiding. But they came back with the good news that the Lord indeed had risen and the other people we are encouraged. When we abide with the Lord, when we invite the Lord to abide with us, we become encouragers. We become carriers of good news. We become bold. We become zealous. We become fervent because you can't be in the presence of the Lord and remain cold. And I want to talk to you, friends. Perhaps you are one of those who have not known the Lord at all. And um, when you are invited to church, it appears to you as you're doing someone a favor to accept the invitation. When somebody says, let's go to church or shares the word of God with you, you think that when they ask you to receive Jesus into your heart, that you are doing someone a favor. As a matter of fact, you are doing yourself a favor. Just like these people invited the Lord into their house, they thought that they were doing him a favor. They didn't know who he was. They thought that they were trying to save him from whatever danger was out there. Then when he came in, they now realize who he was and he left them with a great blessing. And I want to challenge you today, if you have not known the, the Lord, that this is your opportunity to invite him into your heart. Because the Bible says that he stands at the door of your heart and he's knocking. And if you hear his voice and open the door, he will come in and sup with you and you with him. I believe that you have been blessed this morning with these few words and that the almighty God who has made you to listen to this will indeed bless you. God bless you and have a wonderful week. What a wonderful word from the throne of grace. I believe every one of us have been blessed from this word that God has sent to us this morning. Now that you will impart somebody's life again, you, got, you need to share, you need to you know, like and also share so that others will be partakers of this blessing that God has released unto you. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you indeed in Jesus' name.